Hello and welcome to the final in our series of devotions as we reflect on how godly leaders pray. Today is Friday the 10th of September. As we begin, let us still ourselves in a moment of quiet before God. And our prayer for this week. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading today is Acts chapter 4, verse 23 to 31. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants and speak your, to speak your word with boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together were shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit uh, spoken and spoke the Word of God with boldness they were all filled with the Holy Spirit spoke the Word of God with boldness godly leaders are those who pray and they pray God's Word back to him there are so many promises in Scripture many directly that we can take for ourselves many that were meant for the people of Israel, which we can take by extension through Christ. And we know that God is for us and not against us. Now, if that's true, then when we pray, we should be thinking about how we can pray God's word back to him as well. The early church in the Acts understood this principle. They quoted the Psalms back to God. In the light of the persecution that uh, Peter and John had for teaching uh, in Jesus' name, they prayed together and they quoted God's word back to him asking that God would see the threats of the worldly powers against them. And they prayed for boldness to speak the gospel and demonstrate it in signs and wonders. And of course, we know God answered their prayer. The place shook when they were finished, and then the church after that point moved mightily in signs and wonders. Now, if it was good enough for the first Christians, then it's good enough for us today. We can take hold of God's word and pray it back to him. Now, as I said before, not all the promises are necessarily for us directly today, so we need to be careful, but we can take God at his word. We can ask God to remember what he did before and to do it again. We can go to trial with God. Isaiah 43 verses 20, uh, verse 26 says, Accuse me, let's go to trial in the New or Revised. But if you look at other translations like the, the um, English Standard Version, it says, Put me in remembrance. Put me in remembrance. It's an invitation to ask God to remember what he said and what he's done and to do it again. Amazing things can happen when we take God at his word and we call him to remember his promises and ask him to do it again. He can't go against his word and he can't go against his will when we place it before him. And he won't go against it. He's God. He's perfect. Godly leaders know the word of God. They know the promises of God. They know what God has done in the past and what God will do again in the future. And so they ask God to take, to, to, to do it again. They take God at his word and they say, do what you've done before. If we want to see our burden eased, if we want to see God do amazing things in the people, places uh, and, and situations and circumstances and issues that we have a burden for, 
then we can take God's word and, and say, Lord, you've done it before, do it again. We'll spend a few moments reflecting on these things for ourselves. How well do you know the promises of God in Scripture? What can you do to learn more? Have you ever prayed God's word back to him? What was the result? If it was disappointing, ask him to show you the reality of the situation. Take a moment to reflect on the promises of God for your life. If you've been disappointed in the past, ask him for the faith to take hold of everything he has for you. Spend some time seeking God and God alone.
and the blessing for us as we finish. The Lord lead you in righteousness. The Lord make his way clear before you. The Lord spread his protection over you. The Lord surround you with his love as with a shield. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.